it passes this into uh, the chamber. The chamber rotates 90 degrees. The firing pin strikes, the projectile is released. The chamber rotates 90 degrees again, and only insertion of the new round is a spent case ejected. War in Ukraine is, is the largest drone war we've ever seen, yeah. and this is the kind of weapon that, that could deal with that. Uh, yes, it's, it's perfect for the, the current drone threat for the, the issues that we see in, in Ukraine at the moment. We have three types of, of, of rounds that are specifically developed for, for the drone threat. We have the, the airburst round, which is company qualified, uh, and using the same or similar technology, we have a specific round called Kinetic Energy Air Burst that uses a range of uh, pre-fragmented tungsten pellets that can operate up to four kilometers in range. But here you've got a 30 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, and a traditional 40 millimeter. And here you have the, 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 the CETA International case telescoped uh, 40 millimeter and you can see there's a significant advantage uh, in terms of the size differential for, for what you have. Yeah. So Richard McIntosh here, Business Development Manager at CT International. Well Richard, tell us about this incredible looking piece of kit. Yeah, well this is the 40 millimeter case telescoped armament system. Uh, it is the, the most modern, most lethal, medium caliber we weapon system that's currently on the market. Uh, this is the weapon system that's been integrated onto the Ajax reconnaissance vehicle for the British Army and the Jaguar vehicle for, for the French Army. And we've recently diversified the portfolio, uh, moving to the system to, to the, for the French Navy. Wow, and you say this is the most lethal weapon of its type? Yes, yeah, it's got to be one of the most lethal weapon systems on the market. Uh, in terms of armour penetration, this will penetrate uh, more than a 30mm or a 35mm. And it could be mounted, I'm guessing, on pretty much any armoured vehicle? The system itself is totally agnostic, so we have uh, a lot of experience as an organisation. We've, we've mounted this system onto more than 10 turret types. Uh, it could be on a remote weapon system, on a turret. It could be vo um, mounted onto to vehicles or, or for, for naval platforms. Uh, and we're here at the International Armoured Vehicles event in, in Farnborough. I'm guessing you're getting quite a lot of interest in this. Absolutely, yeah. Well, the, the product itself is now moving into service, of course, with the British and the French. So I, I think a lot of the customers are, are beginning to realise the true effect this could have on the battlefield, what that means for overmatch, what that means for armour penetration. And of course, what you see here today is that we're elevating the cannon. The cannon has an arc of elevation of up to 85 degrees. So when you see the proliferation of drones, which is something that we're noticing in the, mm. the current conflict in, in Ukraine, we have airburst technology that can deal with that, that current threat. Wow, so actually this could be used to deal with the threat from drones, which as you say, I mean, you know, war in Ukraine is, is the largest drone war we've ever seen, yeah. and this is the kind of weapon that, that could deal with that. Uh, yes, it's, it's perfect for the, the current drone threat for the, the issues that we see in, in Ukraine at the moment. We have three types of, of, of rounds that are specifically developed for, for the drone threat. We have the, the airburst round, which is company qualified, uh, and using the same or similar technology, we have a specific round called Kinetic Energy Airburst that uses a range of uh, pre-fragmented tungsten pellets that can operate up to four kilometers in range. So here we have our suite of ammunition. The real ingenuity in the design uh, comes from comparing this to a traditional uh, ammunition. So here you're in a traditional system, you have the propellant and the projectile. Uh, what we've did with CT International is we've, in, we've encapsulated the projectile within a cartridge case and surrounded it by, by the propellant. So here you've got a 30 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, and a traditional 40 millimeter. And here you have the, 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 the CT International case telescoped. 40mm uh, and you can see there's a significant advantage uh, in terms of the size differential for, for what you have. Yeah. So the system itself is totally linkless, uh, so we're not relying on flexible chutes or, or belts. Uh, and as you can see yourself, it's very easy to, to handle. Now yeah. one of the benefits for the operator, uh, that this can also be reloaded within the protection of the vehicle itself. So when you've uh, used ammunition that's available, you can reload within uh, under the protection of the vehicle. And how long would it take to reload? Uh, reload is it's really easy for the operator to do. It operates a bit like a vending machine. So it's just a case of inserting a round when, when, the, when the ammo loadout has been uh, used. And obviously here you must be speaking to a lot of potential customers. What kind of questions do they have for you? So I think some of the questions that, that have been asked at the moment is, uh, in a traditional weapon system, you're either single fed or dual fed. Uh, so what that means is you can either use one or two types of natures of ammunition, uh, and the operator has to switch between the, the nature of ammunition. So that could be, for example, using an armor piercing round, 
uh, are using an airbrush round or a point detonating round. What we're seeing in the modern battlefield is that there's perhaps a requirement for being able to use more than two natures. Mm. You could be engaging in uh, armoured vehicle conflict with an armoured piercing round, perhaps using a point detonating round to, to deal with a uh, threat behind concrete targets. And then you have the overhead threat that exists with the drones. With the current weapon systems, it's not possible to deal with that threat. But with CT-40, we've got an automatic, an automatic handling system that removes the burden from the operator, automatically selects the round, puts that into uh, the introductor, uh, and then we can fire with, with the weapon system. So one of the real advantages to the weapon system is how the round is introduced. So the automatic handling system specifically selects the round depending on the nature of the threat, places this into the introductor. The introductor feeds this by our fuse setter. Depending on the nature of the round, if you had a, an airburst type round, we would program uh, the system itself via induction. It passes this into uh, the chamber. The chamber rotates 90 degrees. The firing pin strikes. The projectile is released. The chamber rotates 90 degrees again, and only insertion of the new round is a spent case ejected. There's a real advantage here in terms of not wasting rounds. So the round is only uh, chambered into, into the breach when the shot is ready to be fired. So if you have to switch ammunition natures, there's no requirement to fire the previous round to load in the next round. You see here in a traditional system, the introductor sits behind the breach block. In our system, we've moved this to the right-hand side, and it's perpendicular with the line of sight. So what that means is when the barrel rotates, it's equivalent to a 25 millimeter silhouette, but providing a 40 millimeter firepower. Wow. So there's a real advantage there in terms of integration. It's a really, the ease of integration uh, is one of the real selling points. We can be used in upgrade platforms with existing turrets or, or, for, or, for, or for new platforms as well.